All right, welcome back to the podcast. Today we are excited to have a guest, longtime member, Emily Friedman. Um, Emily, how long have you been a member for? Um, just about four years now. Four years, okay. So 2019? 2020. 20? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I thought, I, for some reason, I feel like you've been around longer than that, but wow. yeah. I feel like I've, got, I've made a lot of long term relationships. You there, have. So it feels like You've it's done longer. enough classes to be here twice. Exactly. Twice the time. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. That's that's really cool. It, yeah, it just feels like you've been a part of this for for a long time, yeah, which is a like good home. a good thing. Yeah. Um, you know, a big reason we want to have Emily on is, <clears throat> and it's it's a great story. I love these stories. I feel like I can really relate to it. And, and me and Emily have even had like a couple of the same like injuries and and things that have like hung on and then came back from them. And, uh, you know, so Emily recently, you know, this year after um, a long, I'll kind of let you get into it, but after a long injury, came back, she's in probably the best shape I've ever seen her in, um, is sustaining that, is signed up to do the half here coming up, and is just, is really thriving in the gym. the half marathon, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the half. Yeah. Uh, after a period where, you know, she wasn't feeling so hot. And I think <clears throat> I think where I'd love to start is just, you know, give us a little little background maybe in just fitness and, and what kind of led you to CrossFit. And then uh, maybe get into your story about, you know, some of your injury struggles and then how you've, how you've overcame them and what you've done here in this last year. So Yeah, so um, – I started doing CrossFit about four years ago, um, and that was the first time I really got serious about wanting to get better in athletics. I, growing up, didn't, I was not excelling in any sport necessarily in high school or college. I played lacrosse in high school for a little bit, but it was never serious, and I um, also grew up um, riding horses, which obviously does not translate to CrossFit at all. Um, But other than that, I really, I've always been active since I was little, but nothing ever competitive. And the reason I got into CrossFit is because probably a year before I actually joined, I did a Team Tuesday with a friend. Um, I'm sure everyone knows Danny Easton. Oh, yeah. And I remember seeing everyone in the gym and all the girls in the gym were so strong and so jacked. And I was like, I want to be like that one day. And... Um, some time went on and things changed in my life and I just decided one day that I'm going to join the gym and I'm going to fulfill that dream of being one of those jacked girls one day. So I joined the gym in 2020 and was just doing classes and then I ended up doing the body biz with Kate and that's sort of I think when I really started taking off with my progress in the gym and um, so then I started working with Dan a little bit more and I got a lot stronger um, I developed all my skills. When I s- first started joining the gym, I could not do a single pull-up. And then a year later, I can just bust out as many pull-ups as I want and just really developed my skills and strength over that time. Um, and then fast forward to this past June, about, yeah, last, well, I guess a, a year ago um, in June, I, so at that time, I had switched my jobs from working in, OB as a nurse, and then I moved to work full time in the emergency room as a nurse. And um, as you can imagine, the ER is a way more stressful job. You're on your feet way more, walking around nonstop for 12 hours, running constantly um, in just a very heightened state. And um, about a year ago in June, I had to get a procedure on one of my on my right foot for like a precancerous cell. And after that um, surgery, I was still working full-time in the ER, and it was just very taxing on my foot with its healing. And eventually it did heal, but then all of a sudden I noticed I had horrible pain in my left foot. And I think a lot of that started from the surgery on my right foot because I was just dumping with my left foot constantly. And it was just this pain that I tried to ignore at first, but it just was not going away. And so I finally went to see a podiatrist, um, and they diagnosed me with posterior tibial tendinitis. And it was just this whole saga of seeing various doctors and being put in a boot and then out of a boot and then back in the boot for like six months at a time, getting injections. And I got needled 
50 times probably in that foot and calf. And it just like really was not getting better. And that, that started in June 2023? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it just seemed like it was just never ending. I would do, in my opinion, I was doing all the right things. I was seeing sure. the doctors. I was getting the injections, going to PT, doing all the exercises, but it just was not getting better. And fast forward to March or April of this year, I remember um, people, so I usually go to the 6.30 a.m. class with the best crew in the gym, in my opinion. <laughs> and they were all signing up for Summer Shred. And the point of Summer Shred is to improve your 5K time. There's like a test in the beginning and a test at the end. And part of winning is how much you improve your 5K time. And I just decided one day that I'm doing this. I'm over being injured. I It's just, it's not serving me. And I think that when you get when you get into that mindset of being injured, it just becomes this like cascade of being in like this victim mentality of like, poor me, I'm injured. And you just kind of like lose confidence in what your body can do. And when I decided I was going to do sh- summer shred, I just decided that I'm going to try to challenge that foot and have a little faith in what it can do and every time I would do a small run and then a little bit longer I would just surprise myself with what my foot really could do I had such a similar experience this year with it and I had been hurt a similar amount of times and or time and had various things that you had so I I I love hearing the story because I ran sort of a parallel thing to it and I was nervous for that first run because I think I did uh, a mile and a half and then two miles the two weeks before it. Like, I got to do something. I can't let the first one be the first time I try. And uh, and then it was like each week yeah. it got a little better. And then the pain receded. Yeah, It's weird how that happens because you're like, you're doing more work. And it feels like it's felt the whole time. Like yeah. you never got even a touch better. And then by the end of it, you, your pain is yeah. gone. And that just goes to show, like, how much healing is mental. Yeah, 100%. 100%. It's such a cool thing. And, and another thing that you added in the um, – kind of at the beginning that I thought was really cool that even for our listeners, particularly, like, the people from our gym, is the extra help that you got. So, like, you were working with Kate in the body mm-hmm. biz, and, like, <clears throat> boom, you got that huge, you know, just body kind of metamorphosis mm-hmm. from that. And then uh, started, like – getting some extra help with Dan yeah. for the skills mm-hmm. where I'll see some people spin their tires here for a little while. Like, you know, they keep doing what they've always done and they're getting mm-hmm. what they've always got. And then I'll see someone who's been here for five years and then suddenly like their whole body has changed. And maybe Kate hasn't mentioned that she's working with them. And I'm like, Hey, are you working with one of the body biz mm-hmm. coaches? And they're like, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, and it's, it's usually obvious because they suddenly dropped, yeah. you know, some weight. Their body comp is better. Um, they're kind of running maybe after the workout yeah. and doing stuff. So I think that's a good thing for people to hear. Like, yeah, there's an investment involved. But if you're going to spend, I don't know, you know, 20 hours a month in the gym mm-hmm. here, uh, it's probably worth your time, you Absolutely, know, to, yeah. or time no, and money for that. So. And you took a long time off, because I, I mean, you didn't run for a long time, yeah. right? For like a year? Oh, yeah, it was probably a year. Because <clears throat> I remember seeing you on the ski erg yeah. before you kind of came boot. back to me. Yeah, yeah, for just so long. Um, wow. Yeah. Did you ever get any more uh, images done on your foot after it's healed no, up? I honestly should have. I mean, when I was in like full injury mode of like, I was literally like limping, just like walking around my house. And I had gotten an MRI, and they had discovered, like, like scar tissue and inflammation and fluid buildup. And it was, like, a, like an actual pathology was going yeah. on. Yeah. And I just – I should – I if I had endless amounts of money for an MRI, I, <laughs> I should get, like, a follow-up MRI just to, like, see if there is things that have changed um, in the pathology. Just because it's interesting how much your body can heal and change when you just, like – really like believe mentally that it yeah. can and like have yeah. faith in, in your body's ability to heal. Have you ever heard uh, <clears throat> Joe Dispenza's story? I listen to a lot of his um, like podcasts, but I don't know his story about his injury or anything. So <clears throat> his is really interesting and, and it's kind of what, so he was a, um, a triathlete and uh, 
he's he's got a book where he explains it. I think it's like you're the placebo, but he got hit by a car in a triathlon, like really bad, uh, fractured his back in a bunch of places, and um, so they took him to the hospital. And I mean, it was like, hey, we don't know if you're ever going to be able to walk again, and they wanted to put a big steel rod in his back, so. They're going to have to, like, fillet his back open and put this huge rod in his back that was going to be very limiting for, I don't know, most physical activity. Like, he was going to be kind of in a Frankenstein sort of mode where they're like, you more than likely won't walk. He went, he got three different opinions. He was just laying, like, face down, I think, like, this whole time. He was in the hospital for, like, three weeks, and then he just, he said no, and he had um, someone take him home, Mm -hmm. and... So he, ta- he goes home, and he's just laying face down, and all he does is he, he sat there and just imagined his body repairing itself. Um, and I don't know how long he did that for. It might have been, like, eight weeks. Mm-hmm. And then his, like, like, his back, like, very miraculously healed. And, you know, now he does all these seminars and, and, and things, but it's, it's a really cool story and testament to yeah. that. Like, he was able to more or less fix his back in this natural way, um, like meditating and doing all of that. And again, it's not a, it's not something you can necessarily like prescribe to someone like sit there and think yeah. about fixing your back. That's, you know, like imagine the surgery or, or something he went through like the surgical procedure, yeah. like every day for the, a certain amount of time until it, it, he like finished it. Just like this, yeah. like in minute detail. Yeah. Um, it's a great story if yeah. anyone's like wants to, you know, they've ever had a bad injury or, you know, they want to get some hope. It's it's a really neat, um, a really neat story as far as like someone who was in as bad of condition yeah. as you can be in. And, you know, even like your foot, if you're if you have a foot injury like what you had and I just know from literally we were both kind of experiencing it at, at the exact same yeah, time. Yeah, I had her come year. talk to you because yeah, she yeah, came back to yeah. work there. I'm like, you need to go talk to yeah. Brandon. Yeah, we, we, he's going, we sat down yeah, and had a conversation. He's going through the same yeah, thing. <laughs> so <clears throat> when you have an injury like that, you can't get away from it because you got to walk. Yeah. So you got to walk. You want to go to the gym. You know, for me, it's it's my livelihood. So I'm in here and, and, and kind of having to face it all the time. Um, this is a huge part of your life, and it was yeah. similarly as important to you. Yeah. And, you know, it's devastating and you can get really bummed out and, and then, you know, go searching a million different places. And then you finally come to the spot where, uh, the only person who's going to pull you out of it is you. For sure. You're the only, you're the, no one's coming to help and they yeah. might try, but they like, you have to be the one to do it. Yeah. You have and, to make that decision that mm-hmm. you are getting better. And that's what you did. And so... You went through summer shred, you crushed it, you ended up running a great 5K at the end, and you were just solid, like, the whole way through. She almost won it. I know, I know. (laughs) Next year. (laughs) Yeah. And and then, so then, you stepped it up after that. So, after summer shred, then, what was kind of the, what was the next challenge? Yeah, so after summer shred, I, um, someone asked me if I would do a Spartan race with them, and I was like, Sure. I'm someone where I will say yes to almost anything just because I think that's that's the cheat code to life is just say yes to every opportunity that, that comes your way. And uh, my friend Mary asked me to, to do Spartan, me thinking it was going to be like five miles tops. So I get there, and she's like, oh, by the way, it's 14 miles. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> that day? Oh, my God. So then I was like, wow. okay, well, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I did it, and I think that every time that, And that goes for anything in life, whether you're inside or or outside the gym. Every time that you do something that you didn't think you can and you surprise yourself, it just gives you that confidence to keep upping the ante. Yep. It's like you almost create your own uh, definition of yourself. Yeah. Like that that you redefine yourself every... Oh, yeah. And people can do so much more than, than they think they can. I think so many people count themselves out before they even start. And I think that if you just, in, like, you genuinely believe that you can do something or that you can get better, you just will. Like, that's just that's just a, a guarantee. Yeah. Now, when we, so we worked together, was it in the spring during that summer shred time or right before? I think it was right before, actually. Okay. Yeah. 
So we had talked a lot about, like I had you on like the fast track of all the somatic healing. Yeah. And so I'm just curious how that plays a role. If you think that helped you or in the end, was it just you kind of like saying, I'm done, I'm done with this freaking injury? Yeah. No, I think it was definitely a lot of um, also doing the the work to see. I mean, I think that when also when you have an injury that is just not getting better and your body is not healing, you really do need to take a step back and think about other things that are going on in your life yeah. that are keeping you from healing. And, and not just current stuff, you know. Yeah. And I think it, it's really interesting, and you know, I'm not going to share the specifics of what we talked about with your past, but – um, Brandon's in a grief group right now with his parents. And so one of these exercises is to write down literally everything in your life that has ever happened to you that that really affects you. That yeah, That's like a, like loss. a loss. Yeah. yeah. And so said this sweet older woman, it, she looked like a little church lady, had been through so much. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, it sometimes it's obvious, like losses in your life, the loss of a parent yeah. or whatever, or um, sometimes not other things that hit you really hard that maybe someone else want to understand. Like when she graduated from college, it was really Mm -hmm. uh, upsetting for her that her parents weren't there because they were both dead. And she was like the first person in her family to graduate from college. But um, it all adds up. And that's what we started to talk about was, okay, hey, not just like what's going on now. And I think you getting out of the ER really, really helped. But it's the journaling, the meditation, the working through like your child. I mean, literally like from birth (laughs) up to where you are at now and just kind of getting it out, whether it's speaking it or writing on it. And you have a hard time with emotions, feelings. Yeah. She's a straight dude. No, (laughs) She's like, how am I feeling? Tired. (laughs) Yeah. No, I think that's so true. I think that a lot of people like myself are just really good at not – just not thinking about things. Well, you've you've trained yourself. Yeah, I'm very good at pushing things down. I'm I'm very good at just You grew up in an ER sort of situation. For sure, which is almost (laughs) why the ER was too traumatic. Because I was like, that was my whole childhood. I don't need more of that now. Yeah, yeah. But I think that for people like me, when you are that stressed and your body is just like, we can't do this anymore, before I even can mentally get to that place, my body will tell, like, it's like, no, we have to stop. Like so your body, you, you're kind of you. learning to. Do you think that's the injury, or now you're learning to feel it? I think a lot of that was the injury. I think that. I think that that was because I wasn't listening to what was happening in my head. It was like, well, then we're gonna sh- we're gonna stop you somehow. And yeah. the way that, and I, I mean, I do think there was something behind the injury. Right. Obviously, right. there was there like an initial situation yeah. or event. But I do think that when you aren't healing, it's also your body saying like. We need to listen to something. Something is yeah. off, and because you're not resu- you're not addressing it, we're going to show you that you have to. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, like when you don't deal with your childhood stuff, it just I mean everything just adds up. Everything accumulates over the years, and like at some point, it's just going to be too much for your body to keep pushing down. Yeah, and just and I want to bring this up also, like for the viewers, just so they understand if they're dealing with an injury. It was you deciding to get better, but then also you working through yeah. that. So do you keep like a daily journaling practice oh, yeah. now? I, okay. yes, I journal every day and I awesome. meditate every day. Awesome. And also, yeah. we, like many moons ago when I first started working yeah. with you, I, on, I mean, we really did not start seeing a huge change until I started just meditating. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't a big, I mean, anyone can meditate for five minutes a day. Right. Anyone has five minutes That's a day. That's right, because your body just started like, yeah. you, you were kind of stuck at this like, body composition, yeah. weight, which wasn't horrible, but you're like, man, I'm putting in all this effort. Yeah. And then you started meditating, you started dropping, yeah. dropping, dropping. Yeah. yeah. And just right. like, I think that like how you work out any muscle, you have to work out your brain. Yeah. Every yeah. single day. That's really cool. When I you can get, when you can get your <clears throat> nervous system to calm down and, and actually rest in any sort of way, that is how you're able to like heal up, oh, yeah. you know? So even even from like looking at it at that really purely physical way, that's what we're doing, but you have to do it from like the inside out. So like, you know, that manifest in, in like, you know, building muscles and, and all of that because you're able to like <sighs> calm down. And I remember personally <clears throat> what's really weird is I had, I was meditating 
And um, so when I, I like PR'd all my lifts, uh, it was like two or three years ago, I did some power hour. I imagined myself like getting bigger and stronger during this one meditation. I could just, see, it's almost like uh, this old video game, Mario Brothers, where you ate the mushroom and you got big. And uh, I saw that happening. And I was like, I was doing CrossFit. I'm like, I'm going to do power hour for a little bit and go attack some of these lifts that I've always wanted to. I, I just felt like the right time. It was in all this. It was just a mental transformation and everything took off like a rocket ship. And I was like almost 40 years old. It didn't make a lot of physiological sense yeah. at the time. Um, but it's really cool how, how that can yeah. actually work and manifest. And that's what it sounds like you were yeah. able to do similarly with uh, that meditation yeah. in your body. For sure. Like when you visualize it and you can see it happening, it just, you convince yourself that you can do it. And then you just truly like believe that that result is in inevitable. Yeah. That's really neat. I yeah. like that. And I like that combined with like kind of offloading the old crap, but then, you know, you want to move beyond that where it's not, that's not defining you right. and you can let that go and then just imagine, you know, dream yeah. up what you want to be now. Yeah. I think everyone every day has the decision to choose a different narrative for themselves. And like you get to pick the story that you're living in. You can choose the story where you're sad and depressed and down every day, but you don't have to. You can choose a story where you are getting better and that you are going to like meet your goals and see your dreams come true. Yeah. And, and so can you bring us up to speed? Like what is your current balance with workouts? What do you do on a weekly basis? So right now it's a little bit different with running just because I am um, training for the half marathon in a couple weeks. Um, but I would say on a normal weekly basis, I will do CrossFit probably five days a week. Um, right now I am adding some longer run days where I won't do CrossFit. But I also will sometimes add in some rev workouts that look fun, like the partner workouts are really fun, and doing some extra like power hour workouts or just extra lifting as well to – because I, I will say strengthening the muscles around my foot have helped a lot and doing a lot of accessory work has helped. So you probably do about 12 workouts a week. <laughs> Something like that. I know. I see you in here I'm on here Saturdays. For a long time. You're like always taking power hour, and, but you're already sweating. I'm like, I know you yeah. just came you're from like CrossFit. Yeah. What, yeah. what are you doing for running? So I'm actually working with Pat. He's um, He wrote me like a um, pre half marathon running split schedule. Cool. So I've been doing one long run a week with intervals mixed in with the long run and then two other short runs just to add some volume. So only running like three days a week, which really is That's great. very yeah. doable for anyone. Yeah. Yeah. What's the longest you've run um, period before you do this? Well, so, you did that. You did that Spartan. But that wasn't. It's different. You're running, running into, you're going to obstacles and yeah, you're kind of walking for a little while. And, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. and you're like swimming yep. in a pond. Um, <laughs> so the longest I run is I, yesterday I did eight miles and I actually held an eight forty four pace. The Very whole time, cool. That's great. Which is a huge, that's probably like close to your, your 5k pace. Yeah, <laughs> that's honestly, amazing. And that was held for eight miles. Yeah. Not yeah. Pretty easy. That's great. Will yeah. you hit, um, so you've got just this weekend, mm -hmm. will you do a longer run before you run the race next Sunday? I think the so the week before usually is like a deload week. Okay, so, so eight will be the some, longest yeah. you do. Okay, I think that's good for people to hear also yeah. because in my experience, all the, the the programs that I see, I mean, Pat's a very seasoned runner, but they run you too many times per week, yeah. too many miles, not good quality miles. I mean, they're running yeah. like four or five days a week and then they'll run 14 miles before they're, which is, hey, if you are a really high level athlete you want to do that or a high level runner. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you're talking about people that are just training for their first yeah. half or full. Um, but it, it's too many times per week. Yeah. Too many if miles. you're never recovering, you're just going to dig yourself into a hole. Yeah. Yeah. When well, I did it before, I was, I probably crossed it five times a week and I would do either intervals or like a shorter run mm -hmm. during the week. And on the weekends I would just increase by a mile each week and it turned out fine. I, I yeah. think, I think as long as you're, Pretty decent shape and you're a decent runner. Like doing cross, you don't. You can make it through a half marathon. I'm not saying you're going to win or yes. do well, but you can make. Anyone you can, can you can stay trotting for 13 miles. Yeah. You can do it. But adding in a little extra will, you know, probably make you a little better. And yeah. split times will pretty. Do you have a any goal like under two hours or anything like that you want to do? Um, I guess it would be it would be a goal to get under two hours would be nice. But I'm sort of what's, going into what's the split time line. that gets you about two hours? I was just know? thinking about that. Like, I, I used to look at a chart being like, where do I want to end up? Might be like nine. I could be wrong. I'll look it up. Yeah. I think it might be 930. I think which you might right be now right. I could definitely do that. 
um, Bailey's doing the full, so my original goal was to finish before her. Because <laughs> be mm-hmm. if gonna, I are you going to try to run together? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming the course is the same until we finish. Yeah, yeah it, it is. You guys just keep going. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. she's way faster than me. She's like a. She's girl. fast. She can run. Bailey's really fast. She's really fast. No, yeah. it's a nine minute mile. That two hours. Okay. Ooh, that's that's well, a that's tight. I'm gonna. Well, it, to run under two hours, nine minutes per mile. Yep. What, what I'm pace? not so sure about that. Yeah. Well, you can always see how you feel. Yeah, and a I mean, lot of a lot of it depends on the weather and, and, and everything like yeah. that. So <clears throat> we'll see. But you always start off running a little too fast the first time. Like usually, like sometimes yeah. you're just trying to get space and get everyone. I like to start off corral. slow so I feel good when I pass people. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, like I'm winning. You, I'm gonna go in the 11 minute mile. Yeah. Do you run with like a any kind of like a, a pace track or anything that kind of gets in your like like gives you split times as you run? No, unfortunately, honestly, in in all of this running training, I've actually reconsidered getting rid of my whoop just because the whoop does not give you split times. It doesn't even give you your your mile pace. It gives you your average pace for the whole run. So I've been I've been using Strava mm. to to track my um like I like every mileage pace. But with other watches, I was looking at like Polar Coros or something. I would just use like I just used like. A, at my run it was like under armor it was one of the ones that would just every mile will give you i like time. that app yeah it's an old app but it's it's nice yeah. i didn't have a watch or anything like that i would keep yeah. an eye on my total time but it would just yeah. give me input of like you know if i was out for i'm like oh we're gonna pick up the pace yeah. next time you just you don't really know how fast you're running right i'm usually running faster than i want to be yeah the one that i've got at front <laughs> runner just it's just like their that. most basic <laughs> one it gives you a ton of analytics like just yeah. the basic running watch yeah it's like a hundred little over $100, and then the app that's with it, when you kind of just sync it and come back to your phone, it gives you all your all your mile splits, like, elevate. It, it gives you plenty. And then it's just kind of a, a speedometer every once yeah. in a while, like, oh, okay, shoot, right. I better pick it up. Like, right. oh, this Which isn't is, good. This cannot do. I okay. feel like people get too much into the analytics, So I mean, when I've run, not that I'm some elite runner, but I got decent at the half marathon, and – my fastest time, I, I didn't even look at my watch until I was, like, at yeah. 10 miles. And I was like, oh, I feel good. Okay, there, I can yeah, pick I it up. There, aren't there some – sure. are there, there – obviously, there's mile markers on the course, but are there timers on the course where you can see? I every couple remember. miles. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. Like, it seemed like every two or three yeah. miles you would see the time. Yeah. Um, but your chip time might it's vary, different. yeah, depending on yeah. where you cross. So it is kind of nice to have your – just yeah. a, a watch, but if I kept looking at that, it would yeah, cause me gets, a lot of anxiety. I do feel like when you constantly look at your time, <clears throat> you get in your yeah. head, and you're like, am I going too fast? Because yeah. a lot of it's like the mental feedback of like, you see that you're running fast, and then it makes your brain panic of like, we're running yeah. too fast, we should slow down. Yeah. In reality, if you just like went with it, you'd probably honestly feel do yeah. really well. Yeah. I always felt that like, even when I go off a run now, like it takes me a mile or two to kind of get my breathing down mm-hmm. and sink with my feet and just feel comfortable and, and loose. And then, you know... From, like, 2 to 10 miles, it's just, like, stay in a nice, steady pattern. Like, when you get to 10, you're like, oh, only a 5K left. Like, I would get kind of excited. Yeah. And like then, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's a, a fun course, common. though. Yeah. It's, it's a really yeah. fun it's course. Flat. Yeah. yeah, and there's kids at every mile, so it's fun to Yeah, you get a whole cheering Literally. station. <laughs> That's a very well-attended half marathon. Yeah. Marathon. Don't be, like, I don't, I think I, I didn't, I wasn't dragging, but I, a couple times I've done it, like, I don't think I took enough, like, you know, blocks or goos or, like, yeah. energy stuff while I was running, you know. I, I, I Maybe one or two. I think I was so afraid that, like, I was going to, like, negatively affect me or, like, maybe just shut my pants yeah, on the road. Or be like, yeah, I mean, which, like, <laughs> I mean, take care of that stuff early in the morning. Make sure you got, like, your, your whatever you're going to yeah. eat, like, and get your yeah. water in. And you don't want to have that happen on the course. But no, How early does it start? It starts um, at 7, is that right? Yeah, race? it's pretty early. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think if you eat... Yeah, what I've always noticed, if you run pretty fast, I mean, if you're running this and under, I'm all, my whole theory is run it fast enough that you don't need anything yeah. on the half marathon. I've, I've done half before. You know what I, I mean? I'm going to outrun my energy <laughs> loss right if now. You, <laughs> <laughs> but there is a feeling sometimes where it's like, if I don't If you're think, just going for so long. <laughs> so, like, endurance, I mean, endurance sports are very different as far as where the fatigue comes from, having done that training a little bit yeah. and done those races where – you know, you, usually in here we're, we're out of breath or there's muscle fatigue or, you know, you just feel your nervous system doesn't have that pop. But, like, when you do these races, basically it's a feeling of my battery's running low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, everything yeah. just starts, like, you feel like your energy's dropping. So that's why it's, yeah. like, nutrition yeah. is, like, half 
you it know, is. maintaining it. Like, like that's part of the sport is feeding yourself while you're doing right. this stuff, whether it's a, a half marathon or, like, a 100-mile ultra, you know, trail yeah. run or whatever it is. Like, keeping that consistent, whether yeah. it's, like, the little blocks. Sure. Like, every two miles, pop one in. Like, it's not going to hurt. That was a way you. bigger thing for the Spartan because you're on that mountain for, like, five hours. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at that point, you're just, like, starving, and you've depleted all your energy yeah. stores. You're looking for small like animals. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah, they now just, like, like you have energy. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. not yeah. out of breath. Like, my muscles yeah. aren't tight, but, like, yeah. I'm just, like, I'm starting to shut down, like, yeah. everywhere. You're just, like, surviving at that point. Yeah, so that's why, like, I feel like I just, yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't fuel myself as well as I probably should have, and yeah. so, you know, just don't be afraid to just. Well, I'll never forget when. The, the last one I ran, and, and I did the best just because I was chasing Dan, and I couldn't <laughs> see him anymore, but literally he showed up eating nothing. I told him to eat that morning. Had a cough. He's like, I had three cough drops because I had a bad cough, and I <laughs> ate Mexican last night. The guy <laughs> ran, I think, right at 90 minutes, a 90-minute half marathon. He did one long run mm. with me in shitty shoes and, and three cough and drops. Innovate. That's, but that's Dan. But that's also that's also mental though. Like he decides, like I'm just gonna do this, and so he does. Yeah, but then your body starts to break down. But did you see him try to beat Pat in that 5K? Yeah. <laughs> His it, it didn't take. Yeah, <laughs> it, it failed him that day. Yeah. Sometimes there's the training he didn't there have too. Drops that morning. Yeah, 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 exactly. You can't beat training at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and maybe at a certain age that yeah, fails. He's getting yeah, but that was kind of like the, yeah. the, the nonchalance and just. Like kind yeah. of like don't give a shit. Like it, it, it will go a long way. It will. It's it's like, like, yeah. uh, so you like, hit a, like, like a subtle <laughs> confidence of just like yeah. I wanna call it confidence. It's like like I feel like confidence of just not giving a shit sometimes of the same thing. Well, like, you know, like you just we've don't seen Dan like you. wrestle a bulldog, run a run yeah. a run a half marathon in ninety minutes. He's like, I can beat Pat, and yeah. then Pat's like, okay, we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> I run in my sleep. But he did really well. He, he did. did. Yeah, he did do not, well. He, didn't, he, didn't he was run. trying so hard. Yeah. It yeah. literally looked like his legs were going to fall off his body. Like the wheels were falling off. I mean, his body was yeah. just like failing. The, the main thing that, that hurt him that I saw was I said, um, you've just been squatting so much the last few years. His freaking legs are like <laughs> twice as big They're as they were together. when he ran that half. <laughs> yeah. You know, in 2013, He's I'm like so much muscle. Yeah, yeah I'm like your yeah. legs are oh, literally yeah. double the circumference. Like, they're built for like squatting and and yeah. moving weights not now, and not not running and playing yeah. soccer like yeah. they were. Yeah. You know, a decade ago. So that you know, you're just carrying around like slabs of meat now. Yeah. That, that just like <laughs> it's a different purpose. Yeah. So oh, you yeah. got Your body has to adapt. That chub rub will slow you down. <laughs> So, those <laughs> so Emily, I, I yeah. think, um, you know, moving forward, the one thing I've figured out is like, <clears throat> you know, you definitely will figure out things. Um, what is your plan to, um, are you just, so you found something that works right now. So you're, you're doing your journal, you're doing your meditating. Do you have any other goals like after um, the half that you're, you're thinking ahead to or, um, Anything like that. So just, like, yeah. kind of looking forward to the future. Um, I guess in terms of, like, fitness, um, me and <laughs> Bailey are on this, like, Iron Man kick now. Okay. So I guess I really, right now, my goal is to work on my weaknesses. Um, and I think one of my biggest weaknesses is swimming. Okay. Being fit at swimming is so hard. Yeah. And, but it's, it's extremely good for you, and it's a really great sport. So... My goal moving forward, I guess, would be to start maybe working on some swimming. Um, she Bailey's, She's a good one for that. Yeah, yeah which <laughs> thankfully she was a college swimmer, so I've got a, a good coach at home. But um, other than that, I think that, um, I mean, when you look at your life, I, I envision everyone's life as like a pie, and everything that you do in life is takes a slice out of that pie. And so um, I think that when people have tra like trans transitional periods in life or they have a baby or they get into a relationship or they get married, they, I mean, that's going to take a slice out of their pie and then they get really down on, on themselves when maybe they're losing some of their fitness in the gym or they're not able to show up as much for their friends, but you have to do that inventory of like, but what else is taking away from my pie? That's a good, really and good point. I like that. For yeah. me, yeah, I, that. <laughs> yeah, I'm very passionate about being a very good nurse. Like that's very important to me. And um, helping my patients and being there for them to my fullest capacity is extremely important for me. So 
I think that there were times in my life when the gym was taking a bigger slice of my pie. And I think that you have to get realistic and do some self-inventory of like, you have to be okay with not achieving all your goals as fast if there's other things that are taking a piece out of your pie. So if I am really um, intentional about being there for my friends, then I maybe I don't, need, I don't get to do a second workout that day. And that's yeah. okay. And I'm okay with that. So moving forward, I think that working on balancing my personal life and work and the gym um, to a point where I'm happy with where I'm at and, and all those aspects of my life would be a goal. That's awesome. And I think a perfect place to let this thing sit. Um, thank you so much for being on today. That was awesome. Thank, thank you, you, Emily. Yeah. Thanks. Anytime. Thank you. All right. We'll <laughs> see you next time.